Well, hello again, everybody. This is uh, another Primetime Funk Mods video. I have been working on this particular project for months, and it has finally come to culmination. Um, so I was having a lot of trouble um, because I got this beautiful new Funny Playing IPS screen for um, uh, one of the pockets that I picked up and had reshelled in a gorgeous purple. And uh, I was just having so much trouble with getting the, the screen to work consistently um, and uh, also to be able to use my EverDrive because that is one of my, that's one of my key players. I, I love my EverDrive. It is, if you know anything about flashcards, you know this is already an amazing project, uh, product that just works. Um, it's beautiful and it contains every game from the Game Boy and Game Boy Color on here, so I can move it flawlessly in between multiple units. Um, I've got a couple of pockets, I've got a couple of DMGs, a couple of colors, and then also a couple of GBAs, and I can play these games on all of those things with this beauty. So I was just stuck because part of the reason that I even did the pockets is to have the pocket-sized um, availability to play in my original DMG games. Um, that were originally black and white on the funny playing pixel screen. Um, so the, the funny playing screen is just a marvel of modern technology. Um, all of the circuitry is built into the lovely ribbon and uh, operates on a touch capacity and powers directly in. So all that aside, this is all that you originally do um, with the Funny Playing IPS. It has a direct power in, it has the touch sensitive pad that you install in the corner, it actually makes use of the, um, the contrast wheel for brightness, and it is outstanding. And when you turn the pixel mode on and off, it's uh, kind of breathtaking. And they've got 36 different colors, it's beautiful. So it was really, really bothering me that I could not use my beautiful uh, an equally awesome EverDrive in this unit. Um, so it just sat for a while until I finally decided to um, to get active about it. So I um, did a bunch of research, talked to a bunch of people smarter than me, which is like everybody, um, and uh, spoke to Dustin from Handheld Legend. Shout out Dustin, woo! And uh, spoke to Walter, um, one of the uh, the other mods on the Super RetroPie page that I'm an admin on talk to the other admins. Uh, nobody really had a ton of experience with the pockets. Um, I was sort of the first one to, uh, to dig into that. And there was just really not a lot of information out there about how to make um, the, the new high grade but high power draw IPS screens work with a flash cart. Um, and honestly, even how to make them work consistently with rechargeable batteries, because um, AAAs, like the standard ones, that's the reason for all these issues, is that uh, standard AAAs um, are 1.5V, um, and that is what the pocket is prepared to process in terms of power. Um, and so that does not factor in newfangled things like high power draw screens. It just factors in a black and white digital dot matrix, right? So. Um, all the pocket was made to do was to milk as much as possible out of those AAA batteries and make just a regular pocket work. And there's a purity to that, I get it. Um, but the pocket is also very peculiar in the Game Boy lineup. It is the only one that has these particular issues because um, the, the power structure on the DMG um, was very different and then and how it regulated power, voltage that it used, all that stuff. And then there's also, once you skip over the pockets, then they hit the Game Boy Color, um, and they leveled it back out to AA batteries. Um, and so, it, yeah, the, the pocket is a peculiar piece in, in the gaming history of it. It's a gorgeous little device, but um, has its own specific set of issues. So, um, what I did <laughs> was uh, I tried rechargeables, and they were inconsistent. And I, after speaking to, again, people much smarter than me, had picked up and installed, oh, there we go, this little Palulu 5 volt regulator that I got off of uh, HHL site. Um, now, 
This was interesting because after I installed it, it did start to turn on regularly. Um, and what happened is that uh, it would actually flick through the Nintendo logo, and then I think the power regulator was kicking in, and then it would flick through the Nintendo logo again, and then it would flicker a little, and then it would load the EverDrive OS. Um, and then most of the time, you could actually go through and, uh, and just use it like you didn't have anything extra in there, just like it was supposed to. Um, but it started to degrade a little bit over time, and um, it became clear that uh, through talking again with uh, people smarter than me, that using the power regulator, it was actually like increasing a ton of power draw. Yes, it was accomplishing what I wanted it to do, but it was using a lot of power from those batteries. And it would just keep going until it couldn't keep going anymore. So I would just like keep using it, and then all of a sudden functions would stop working um, because it would it would consistently draw power from the rechargeables and from the regular batteries um, until it didn't anymore. And it was impossible to predict and it burned through them really, really fast. So the Palulu, I know you do your job and you're top of the line for a 5V power regulator, but I did not technically need you. You were a stopgap measure while I figured out what was going on. So it was around when I installed this that I decided I was actually going to order a couple of rechargeable batteries and just do this thing. So. I found, and I'll list the specs for it, I, uh, I found some TP, eh, yeah, 4056, so these are the new USB-C charging boards that have um, charge protection built in, unlike um, pretty much all the earlier micro USB models. I knew I wanted to go USB-C because it's current generation. It won't always be, but c'est la vie. Um, and so I ordered a few of those from BoxyPixel's website. It has been pointed out to me that you can get them for cheaper off of AliExpress, but I uh, didn't want to wait that long. So I decided to take the plunge. So the battery, just for giggles, uh, this is the 3.7 volt 102560. Those are the measurements of the battery. And this is the 1800 mAh. Um, I did find, even though the internet was uh, not exactly rife with information on this, uh, someone else who had listed this one and they had a picture of it being fit. Um, but they, it was a bit of a hatchet job on an old one that they were just like experimenting on. So I'm clearly not the first person to trailblaze this. I just um, feels like I'm one of the first people to actually make a video addressing the, the pockets power issues and how we solve them though. So, because I could not find anything. Um, I was tossing information around at lots and lots of people. Um, so uh, I talked to a gentleman from Benven, uh, again talked to Dustin from Handheld Legend, um, Samuel Kilgore, a, uh, a mod extraordinaire, um, and uh, a guy who just like can build a free play CM3 uh, GBA in his sleep. Um, but that he had, did not really have any experience with how the, the pocket acts for power draw and those particular related issues. So without any further ado, I am going to show you what I did. So the, um, the first thing I'll say is that the power regulator um, and this mod are mutually exclusive. In fact, I did this one. Sorry, I guess I have my other one here, which I'm going to use for reference later. Um, but I did the uh, the funny playing um, retro pixel IPS screen one, turned it on, and I was like, sure that I had done it all because I did this pretty much exact same mod on my Game Boy Color. And so I was pretty confident. I turned it on, nothing happens. And I, I did a gut check. There was a sharp intake of breath. And then I started frantically um, messaging a couple of people asking what they, they think might be the issue. Um, I work in, in tech, like I, I, I run a mobile store. And so for some reason, I always forget to do the troubleshooting that I recommend other people do when it's my own stuff. So. Um, first thing that came to mind though was like the power regulator is redundant. Um, I tossed that by a couple of people and they're like, yeah, that actually sounds right. So let's see what happens when we remove it. So quick, easy desolder from here and boom, it all starts working because this was actually blocking the power. Um, so it was, it was set up, uh, I guess it was looping or something like that, that the technical term looping. Um, but we're going to put that thing away again. And then I'm going to talk with you about how I did this actual mod. Because um, I did a couple of posts on the Super Retro Pie page and on uh, the Retro Future. And it seemed like there was a lot of interest in it. And a lot of people requesting videos. 
Um, so I went through a little bit ago and uh, I did up a step-by-step -step in point form that I'm going to, uh, to walk you through on this. And I will, um, in the notes for this video, be posting the step-by-step the -step that I had in there too. And uh, by request, most likely um, putting it all out in a PDF with uh, accompanying photos um, to, to post on the Super Retro Pie page and for other people to, to look and be able to download a step-by-step -step for their own devices if they like. So um, it seems that all the effort that I put in should not go to waste and uh, should be shared with everyone so you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I did. So pitfall number one, um, yes. Uh, even good rechargeables like my EBLs that are 800, um, oh actually my EBLs are 1100 milliamp per, those are good AAAs and they were still working inconsistently with this screen. Um, I also have some Amazon rechargeables that weirdly um, they have less less of a power rating, they're 800 mAh a piece but for some reason they were lasting longer so again inconsistent results. Um, the power regulator is was a good idea, and a lot of people thought we should give that a try. Um, but again, um, was not the answer to this because it was still working somewhat inconsistently and getting worse over time. So, the first step, I'm going to set this aside for a little bit, and we're going to uh, to mime some of these things out. Now, I've already done this mod, so I'm just going to be walking through the steps. Um, in the video, I might insert just some random snapshots of uh, different stages that I was at. But we've got your shell. Now, to do this, you're going to have to actually remove the entirety of the battery compartment. Um, so the way I did it was I started out with flush cutters and very carefully started removing different sections and pieces. Now you wanna be careful that you stay away from the screw posts because you need to keep those in place and, and keep those from getting like cracked uh, because they're already under stress because they're a screw post. Um, but the rest of this, you remove every little bit right up until these edges. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the first one that I did. Uh, I actually did use the flush cutters for the bulk of it. Um, this was a, a slightly more brittle aftermarket one. Um, so with this one, I was just pieces were flying off left and right. Wear protective eyewear when you do this. Protective eyewear is key um, because you're going to be like snapping and snipping uh, for a while. It's, um, I'm not going to say tedious because it's highly rewarding to me personally and I don't quite know why. Uh, my therapist will delve into that, I'm sure. Um, after you've gotten rid of the bulk of it, um, you're going to want to draw back a bit. Remember that less is more. Um, it's really easy to go slowly and take away the pieces that you need, but you cannot get pieces back once you have gone too far. So uh, that's what I mean. Do the bulk of it, get close to your edges, get close to your screw posts, and then you've got two tools at your disposal. Now it really depends. This is a good craft knife. Um, I highly recommend it just for fine tuning anyways, but this guy is going to be um, probably your second choice because yes, it works, but cutting through with that is highly hard on the hands and difficult. Um, the Dremel is going to be your first choice. This thing is USB rechargeable. Uh, it's not the actual Dremel brand. It is just a rotary tool. Um, Dremels uh, are usually connected directly to power and uh, they are high quality stuff. This one was pretty affordable for me though. I got it off of Amazon. Uh, you plug it in um, and it goes three different speeds. Traditionally you have to have it on the third speed. It comes with a bunch of different heads. Um, and uh, you get to choose you know, what's going to suit you best with that one. But that is how I actually did all the fine tuning to get it down to this state and to make it look really clean because that's really the only way I can do it. If I had a shoddy job on there, it would just eat away at me until I went back and just junked it and redid it. So depending on the quality, this thing does say it's ABS plastic, um, but it is not quite the same as this one. The plastic on this one was more malleable and I could like clip and then twist and pull pieces off. This one was just shattering. Um, so I might make better choices the next time around, but it's, it's working for now. So. Um, when you're done, you should still be able to whoop, fit the battery in. The slots 
Oh, jeez. And have it hold in place. Um, I've seen some other jobbies on the uh, on the interwebs, and one particular Reddit one where the guy actually just removed this whole section and then took a clear piece of plastic, um, hot glued it all around the inside because he got rid of the screw posts apparently, and it looked, uh, as the French would say, horrible, um, and I could not countenance that, so I had to go clean. It took some extra time and effort, but I don't think you will regret it either. It is much easier to put this on when the battery's in there. So, step number two was using the Dremel to clean up. And uh, so we're now done with the flush cutters, and we're done with the Dremel. And you can use this to fine tune to your heart's content until it is exactly as you want it. Now, the third step, we're going to get into soldering. So, one thing I recommend, I just have like a, a basic solder kit. I'm not actually turning it on because, again, you only solder when you really have to. I'm not going to be desoldering any connections just so I can walk through steps on this again. But this guy is a pretty handy one. It's um, got a fairly fine point. So, what I'm going to recommend is before you really go any further, you plug your soldering iron in. Hopefully you've done a bit of entry-level soldering before but you're going to want to heat it to no more than 300 degrees. Some of my most heartbreaking mistakes in my early days were because uh, I read a lot of things on the net that said, oh, anywhere between 300 and 350 is fine. It is not. Um, if you re go over 300 degrees, um, it's going to be really, really hard for the solder to stick to anything um, but your soldering iron. Um, the tip pretty much just absorbs everything that it comes near. Um, and nothing ends up actually on the contacts, either on the wire or on the, the PCB that I'm trying to get, you know, solder to stick to. Um, I use a, a flux core, um, which is just really handy. I bought some flux and then realized I didn't really need it because flux core sort of does the job. I'm not that super advanced on my soldering. So what the next step will be is, um, not this. <laughs> Okay, on the PCB, now we're gonna have to like picture this in our minds, but when you open up your pocket, you're gonna see there's two battery posts. One that um, fits from here and extends back and goes up, and then this one here. So we've got our, our positive and our negative posts. Now, um, this is one where you're gonna have to carefully um, I had it actually set up, you can use a vise or something that's going to be fairly gentle on your board. I set it up and then you heat up the contacts on the back side of the PCB, on the other side, um, until you can pull with the tweezers. So I actually had to set it up so it was, it was standing like so. So um, I actually had it between like two heavy pieces right here so it wouldn't move a lot back and forth when I was pushing and pulling uh, but you heat on the one side with the soldering iron on the other side of the PCB and then you can yank at the same time uh, to take off those contacts and again uh, I I guess I could have like taken this apart more and uh, you know giving you a better visual aid but I'm not a crazy person so I'm not gonna do that um, so yeah, uh, if you look on the back side of the PCB corresponding with these two spots, there's just like uh, kind of a round mess of solder under there because it's got like a big contact that it needs to hold in place. Um, so you just heat it up until the, the solder starts to, to get fluid and then you, you pull gently, ever so gently, um, until the contacts come out because you don't really want to damage anything on the way out. So, um, removing the battery contacts is the next step before you really get to any of this other stuff. Because um, you need those to be clear and you're going to need to be able to connect your charging board and your, your batteries uh, as a result to it. So, um, the next thing I'd usually recommend would be using a piece of just simple double-sided tape. Um, you've got this guy, the scotch tape, double-sided and uh, just put a piece on the back of the charge board um, and then fit it down in place. Now you want to make sure that it is 
far enough away from the bottom that it's not going to be interfering with this screw post because those are your spots where you're going to be screwing through here so you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of clearance um, mine was just barely um, and then once you've got that figured out just take a pencil and do some basic markings like on both sides and on the back side um, it just means that you'll have an easier time of it later um, so uh, you got double-sided tape on it use the pencil to mark it off and then you want to loosely fit the back shell over so um, again this is a little bit harder with the the battery in the way but you want to loosely fit it over so you can get an idea of where that charge port is going to come out because ideally you want it to stick out a little bit past the edge of the PCB um, so it has to come out a little ways um, and then uh, once you actually figure out the spot, you're gonna to wanna to mark it with either like a marker or a pencil, uh, something like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to work with the Dremel. So now this is assuming that you don't have a Dremel, you could always use a, like a very fine drill bit. Um, they've got some measurements on the net for people who wanna be able to do that as well. Um, get my workspace all messed up here. We'll come back to the soldering later. <clears throat> so, Yeah, loosely fit the shell um, over top to get a sense of where to cut the hole for the charge port and mark the cutting area with a pencil. And then use a drill bit on the Dremel, that's, that's what I did, to drill a few holes directly in here. Now, once you've got those holes filled, um, you can usually like join them up with the drill, just being, again, very careful not to, to overexpand. Um, and then what you want to do is take a set of micro files. Um, my favorite of the microfile bunch is this round one. So I was able to join the holes together by filing in between, and then you can actually just manage again, less is more. You don't want to file a ton. I actually got my holes a little bit bigger than I thought I would need because of just where the placement was on the shell. Um, but you know, there's worse things. So the micro files are a handy tool to have as well. I've spent a little while building up my, my tool repertoire for the right tool for the right job um, is, is pretty amazing. So once you actually have uh, taken your time and filed that hole out, then you fit the back shell in place to, to test the new charge port hole. As you can see on this one, it is just centered right in there. And then you adjust as needed. So if you're putting it in there and you see that it doesn't really quite fit and you don't have the room that you need, then you know, go back to it with the, uh, the Dremel and with the microfiles and do what you have to do. So the next step would be preparing your wires. Now this is, again, soldering 101 for someone who is barely on to soldering 102. Um, to be able to prepare your wires properly, you need to actually tin them um, and you need to strip not a lot off of there. Now, the wires that I use, I have these ones that are uh, have a silicone uh, outside to them as opposed to plastic because the silicone doesn't burn easily, especially when you're doing a lot of soldering. So you'll want to Cut a small length of black and red so you can see the ones that I've got on here. So forget the battery is there for a second. You've got, here, we'll just bring that over here. You've got a length of red that goes up to the positive contact and you've got a length of black that goes to the negative. So you don't want to have a ton of extra on here because you're still going to want to be able to, to secure these down on the board. Um, and you don't want it to really interfere with, you know, being able to close up the back. So once you actually have the wires prepared, it's key, and I'll show you how I do it here. I'll just take a little length of wire. And for a lot of you, this is going to seem so basic, but again, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to do mods, uh, mod videos for people who don't uh, really do a ton or who are just learning. So for me, the... Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of like fancy um, stripping tools out there, but just because I kind of like the precision of it, 
I use the craft knife and I just roll it a little bit. And because it's silicone, it cuts very easily and simply. And then you have got, I do a little bit of a hold it and twist. So it actually gets it to be more of a cohesive wire on that end. And now what you want to do is you need to tin your wires. So there's a couple of steps to this. Um, for me, I actually tend to use this guy and yeah, he's there. He won't be there forever, but I will do both ends of the wire and then you use your soldering iron and, and bring the solder up. We'll just pretend that it's here. You would have it up there and you let it heat and coat the wire at the end, just very, very gently. Uh, so you want to do that at both ends of the, the length that you cut. And then you also want to actually add some solder to the charging board. So you're going to, if you're coating uh, the end of each of these wires, you've got both ends of a black one and both ends of a red one. Um, so those will be tinned and then the solder will actually just like join together pretty flawlessly when you go to, to solder it onto the actual board. Uh, you want to actually do this to the end contacts of the battery as well, but be careful that you do not, um, here, these two things, um, once you've actually got them cut, stripped, and you have them tinned, you want to actually keep those contacts apart, like wrap one of them in captain tape or something like that. Having them connect um, really will mess with um, a lithium polymer battery because the circuitry is not designed to handle that. Um, it is just bad. Don't connect positive and negative. Just think of what happens if you do that with your car. Um, bad idea. You're going to have a bad time. So um, make sure that those things are separate at all times once those wires are stripped off at the end. Um, same thing, twist them and then tin them and then yeah, wrap captain tape around one of them until you come back to the battery later. Yeah, now that brings me to the battery itself. You want to be very minimal with how much you, you take off of the batteries because as you can see, the way I've got this um, sussed out is I left most of the length there because the best way to fit it in is with the, the wires coming out at the top corner and the back facing outward. For one, you don't have to, it looks a little bit nicer when you've got the battery cover on there as well, but it leaves you some slack. So if you do have to take it off and do a willy nilly video like this, um, you've got a little bit of room that you can just set it down and not have a lot of stress on it. Um, and honestly, this is really, I tried a few different ways really all the different variations of how it fits in there. And this is the best fit um, for being able to get the, the door on after you've got it all fitted together. So um, now the, the TP4056 board is our next step. So I'll remove this guy and we can come back to that. But I think you can find a lot of information on the web about how to, um, to coat or to, um, to tin wires. Um, so uh, I probably won't go really deep into soldering theory here, but for the most part, I just want to make sure that it's kind of a complete walkthrough for somebody like me who really needs it spelled out. So now the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, bring in your solder and I've actually got the, uh, the charging board up on here so you can see it. I believe you should be able to see it through the magnifying glass. And we're gonna pretend that this is our solder. Now, the same thing, keep your soldering iron at about 300 degrees um, or less, and then you're gonna wanna heat up the contact while bringing in the solder. And so once you're done, you're actually gonna be left with like a little bubble. It's gonna fill in the hole that's on each of these contacts because you're going to need to have the those contacts prepared before you go in to do any of the other soldering with the uh, the wiring from the battery um, or between the charge board and the PCB. So you're going to want to fill in each of those little holes with a dab of solder. And again, with the soldering, less is more. It's um, harder to remove than it is to add. So just dab a little bit at a time until it melts and fills in the gap. So um, that's really all you need to do to prepare the board. Um, 
There's a reason why I said not to uh, actually glue the thing down early. You've got the placement, you've got it marked off, um, but this is where we'd actually like pop it off with the fairly easy to remove double-sided tape and then make sure that we're prepping it for the soldering. So I'll put that guy back. Now, next step is gonna be actually soldering this thing. So we are going to solder our first contact point. Now, again, we forget the batteries here, and again, it's nice to have that slack. Um, so the outermost contact is where you wanna actually go from, because there's a couple of different spots there, but there's like, there's an out and an in. And the two outermost edge ones are, are the, the out signal. So that's um, where the, the power is going through here, through the charge board. Um, so it comes through the charge board and goes to the battery, and it goes out through and into the PCB. So as you can see, the black wire actually comes down to the lowermost minus contact between the two here. So this is the one, and you may need to add another dab of solder to that if um, a, most of it came off when you were removing the, um, the battery contacts, um, the actual, you know, the ones we removed earlier. Um, you may need to add a little bit more solder onto that and, uh, and then just make sure that it's nice and secure um, because this is a power connection. This is gonna be your main juice. So you wanna make sure it's a good solid one. If it looks a little touchy, reflow it a little bit, um, loosen up the solder and do a better job, and then cover it with Kaplan tape at the end because this is a direct power connection. Now, the same thing is done with the red wire. So again, the outermost connection here, that's your out. We don't have too much of it. The red comes up and it goes to the, again, the bottom most of those two contacts. So the one that's closest to the type is the one that you're actually going to, because this is BT plus right here, this is BT minus. The, uh, the contact that is closest to that lettering on the board is the one that you're gonna to wanna to attach it to. And just make sure you've got your, your captain tape pretty secured in there. I'm messing with mine, I'm probably gonna to have to redo it after. Um, so now you've actually got your contacts out. Um, this would be a good time uh, to do some testing. Now, we're going to solder the battery contacts to the board. So just like we've done, we already had them tinned, and then again, red to red, black to black, and then you're gonna wanna charge, or plug in your charge board. So this guy should go off. So it's showing this battery is not fully charged. I've used this thing a little bit today. Um, when it is fully charged, it turns blue. Now, this one does have charge protection built into it and you can play on it while you're charging, but it's not recommended. Um, it can affect the life of the battery and there's, there's some unpredictable things that happen. Um, so generally speaking, if you want to um, prolong the life of your battery and you know, ensure that no unforeseen things happen with your charging, then you probably would just want to stick to charging it when it is uh, turned off. Um, I still plug mine in every once in a while just to turn it on to uh, show what it looks like and how it works, but for the most part uh, we have tested and now we are good to remove. So now you've tested, we can actually put this together. And just make sure that it all fits again. So that is working quite nicely. And at this point, because again, we were just dealing with double-sided tape up till now, um, you will want to get your hot glue gun. And uh, for me, I actually used Gorilla Glue as well. I, I picked up, um, I lifted it off because it's again just double-sided tape so it pops up pretty easily and this is why again we, we already did our adjustments to the shell 
so you do not want to end up putting it back in a different spot that you had you actually already fitted it for um, so I peeled it off and uh, actually put Gorilla Glue uh, directly on stuck it down um, made sure that it was in place and then I used a little bit of hot glue strategically and again sparingly um, to secure it down on the board you do not want to use a lot of that it causes a huge mess um, but I just got a little high temp project pro like the ad tech um, I uh, just got it from Walmart it was like eight bucks um, and it cost a little bit more to get uh, some decent glue but this was a well worth uh, well worthwhile investment so I highly recommend now, um, once you've actually got it glued down, like the, the hot glue dries in seconds, so you don't even have to wait for time for it to cure. Um, the super glue is there to sort of secure it at the base. The hot glue is uh, holding down all of the edges. And then you put some Captain tape on there. You don't want uh, like direct contact between the circuits on the board and this, this high-end battery that's hanging around back here. Like, yes, it's covered and it's protected, but again, we really don't want to tempt fate. Um, also, with a little bit of heat dissipation, if the charge board is giving off a little bit of heat, it will actually be blunted a little bit by the captain tape in there too. That's not really what it's for, but it's just uh, a handy side effect of it. So, at this point, uh, you want to fit the PCB back into place on the front shell. So, I haven't really removed these because, again, they're soldered like the screen and uh, the PCB are soldered to the front screen. Um, so the, uh, the key would be, at this point, you would actually want to fit it all back into the front shell. Uh, you'd want to fit your ribbon back into place and make sure that it is secured down. Um, you would need to re-solder the, uh, the power connection to the funny plane cable um, and the connection to the uh, touch-sensitive pad on the top there as well. So again, less is more, just a little gentle touch. It's already got some solder points on there if you were using the screen before. Um, and so all you'll need to do is just reflow it a little bit, leave it alone. Uh, you don't want to get overly fancy with it because again, that's a very, very complicated ribbon and a very, very hot soldering iron. So now this is kind of where you're at. Um, now there is a different version of this, which I will show you in just a second, but we'll finish this and then I'll show you the variation. Um, so you fit the PCB back into place on the front shell and screen, screw it all into place. So make sure, again, we've got our three um, Phillips screws are in place securely. Reconnect the ribbon, resolder any display contacts that you need to. So, um, And then look over all the solder points. So I would say it is really worth just taking another quick look at these main ones at the ones on the board and make sure that they're not too sketchy. Um, I know if you don't do a lot of soldering, uh, it's kind of hard to know what good looks like, but the um, the more like round and shiny it looks, generally the better it is um, because it means that the, the solder flowed well and you don't have contact that's just um, on the verge of popping off at a bad time. So double check your solder points and then we can actually put this thing back together. So, uh, that fits nicely. I have my uh, handy dandy WowStick electric screwdriver. Now, the first contacts that I'm gonna do though, or the first screws, are the Phillips head ones. And again, this is why you want some slack available on the battery, because we gotta pull that out, and then we are going to make sure that our Phillips head ones are screwed down. I know some people um, use the uh, the tri-wing ones as well, and that is a perfectly legitimate choice. Um, I just found that these ones were better sized for the, the depth on the PCB board on the pocket. Because again, the pocket's just a little bit of a weird one. that is nice and secure. You can pop the battery in as it should be. And then we uh, replace the rest of our tri-wings. And again, one of the nice things I like about the electric screwdriver, it is impossible to strip the contacts because it has uh, resistance built in. 
it will just not continue if it is already down and tight. Once you get resistance, just stop. Yeah, so like I said, you don't really need to worry about stripping it. Once it meets really any sort of resistance, it stops and assumes that you probably need to go on by hand. That one's better. Just a cursory tighten, but again, you want to be careful not to strip anything. Like I said, easier to do with the battery in place. So now we have our fully installed charge port and lithium polymer battery. And then we can plug in our EverDrive. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to leave this in um, because. I forgot to put the power switch on, and it's all just an honest part of the process. <laughs> and we've got our beautiful retro pixel funny playing screen. I have pixel mode on. It loads the Nintendo logo once, goes straight to the EverDrive menu, and then can go straight to whatever classic game you feel like entertaining yourself with. Super Mario Land's always a hit. So, that is the end of the walkthrough for the, uh, the Funny Playing IPS. Um, gorgeous screen. I'm so happy that I get to actually enjoy it on a regular basis now and not have to worry about it cacking out on me regularly. Um, it was just getting to be so much of a chore to use it over time that I started actually avoiding it, which is a darn shame with one that looks this good. So, we're going to shut that one down, and then I'm going to show you the alternate. Now, I'm not going to go through that whole thing again, obviously. Um, it is the same build. Um, you'll notice everything is exactly identical as it was on the other one. Same spots, same captain tape, same solder points. Now the one thing different, so the Funny Playing IPS um, has a direct connection to power from this spot right into up here. But on this one, this is actually one of the newer screens that uh, have dropped on AliExpress. They're a much lower power draw IPS screen. And they still actually have a, um, a touch sensitive pad that goes up at the top. Um, but instead of a power connection there, uh, when you have the batteries in it, um, there's a white cord or a white wire that runs down through here and they actually instruct you to just wrap it around the battery post. Now, so this was the, the second one that I did um, and I just did the, the LiPo upgrade a couple of nights ago. And so there's a bit of a quandary. I'm like, okay, well, if it was supposed to wrap on that original battery terminal, is it okay, essentially, for me to just solder the charge board contact and the uh, the white wire that's supposed to go to the the plus contact into the same spot and the answer was uh, again I ran it by a few other people more knowledgeable than me um, I thought it should be fine because of the same principle um, and turns out I was correct in this particular case but I'm not going to get a big head about it um, so we actually soldered the white wire and the red one into the same spot and just made sure there was a lot of flow there um, and that there was a lot of, um, a little bit of excess solder on there to make sure that um, both were like firmly grounded. So um, then I closed it back up and uh, was able to get the same result that I had with the, the funny playing. It just works and it works beautifully. So I'm gonna seal this one back up. 
So again, for anybody who's using the, the new low power draw screen, you just solder the, uh, the white wire instead of wrapping it around the, the positive battery post. Um, you just solder it into the same spot that that battery post came out of. So that was nice and simple. Yeah, so again, uh, got it all put together, turned it on, and it just works. So I'm going to put this all back together and, uh, and then go cut this video for you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this was a longer one, and I know it isn't going to be the, the go-to for someone who just uh, wants a quick tip, but um, I, I find there's a, a definite need for full-size walkthroughs for anybody who needs them. Uh, so you can actually go through from beginning to end, pause it, come back to the same spot and not have to you know, worry about it going, going by too fast for your eyes and for your, your comprehension. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, this will be the, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I've got any other mods planned for the very near future. I think I've got a, an upgrade to my GBA SP to put a USB-C charging port on that one. Um, but uh, for now, uh, this is uh, Primetime Funk Mods signing off, and happy modding.